Welcome to our third video on hyperbolic paraboloid vaults. In a previous video, we started with two parabolas, y equals kz squared, which is this one, and y equals minus kx squared, which is this one. We then duplicated and replicated this one, which was the equivalent of sweeping it out through space along this parabola. And that produced this shape. Then we swept this parabola along that parabola to produce the full hyperbolic paraboloid. That was our first method. Then we had a subsequent video in which we generated a grillage in multi-frame to establish the X and Z coordinates of all the joints, and then numerically processed a 3D formula in Excel to establish the Y coordinates. So this was that formula which we used in Excel. In this video, we are going to use geometric directrices to generate a hyperbolic paraboloid surface in multi-frame. So in this process, keep in mind that previously we were always working with curves, parabolic curves. Those curves are in fact the, the path of the true structural elements. In this particular video though, we're going to look at the geometric directrices which turns out they are straight lines that are a simplified way of generating the geometry, but they are not the structural members. And that'll become clear as we develop this idea further. But we're going to look at multi-frame now, and I've already done some preliminary work and that I have laid out in the y equals zero plane, a square, which goes from negative 32 for both x and z to positive 32 for both x and z. Now, right now, this member is parallel to that member, and that member is parallel to that one because this is a square. We are now going to skew these lines relative to each other, which means they're not going to be parallel anymore. And the way we're going to do it is we're going to move everything in the positive 16 foot direction for Y. So now this line obviously is no longer parallel to that one and this one is no longer parallel to that one. Then I'm going to take all of these and I'm going to uh, subdivide them, which I can do with a keyboard command of control B for break. Then I'm going to subdivide all these into 16 members and into 16 submembers. Then I'm going to come along and I'm going to snap in some more members here. So I'm going to snap that right there. this right here. And by the way, I can't just replicate these. There's no function in multi-frame that allows me to replicate them and rotate them in the manner that I need to. Or at least if there is a function, I'm not aware of it. But you'll notice every line I'm drawing here is a straight line. None of them are curved. So you might wonder where the curves are going to get generated and that will be clear in just a moment. What you will notice is that you're beginning to get a visual impression of a curved surface. And you can think of these straight members as sort of, they are mapping out that surface. They're not the structural members, but they are setting that surface geometry. And that's why we call them the geometric directrices, 
because even though they're not the structural members, they help us figure out where the structural members need to be. So now I'm going to do another subdivision of 16 units. And now I have a bunch of points that I can work off of. And to help me draw this, I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. And I'm going to tilt this down some. And maybe zoom out just slightly. And now I'm going to say this point and that point and that point can be connected together. So I'm going to come take this function. I'm going to snap right here and go over to there. And also I'm going to do something else. I could go right along the diagonal of this thing. I'm going to see if I can do this and actually make it snap. So I'm going to go here. And I should have done this first because then you'd understand why I picked the points that I picked. Okay, so now you'll notice that we have used all these straight lines to generate a curve. And now, uh, the reason I started snapping from there to there to there is because if I come across here, I won't be intersecting that member. I'll be at a slightly different location because these two members are at a different height than the average of those two members. So, and in fact, I guess I could actually prove that to you by snapping this together. And then I can zoom in on these two and get very close. And I can even do a control break on them. And you'll notice the center points are not at the same place. In other words, they do not intersect. So I'm going to do a control Z and back away and that's why I'm going to start with the member here that can then snap to these three points where it's actually intersecting this member. And just to prove it by the way I look here and the end joints are 33 and 275 and then I look here and they're 275 and here I have 275 and so forth. So those things are snapping together. So now I can do another line like this. And I'll snap it to there. And then this member will go here and there and there and there and so forth. And now if I spin this around, I'll discover that these are curved, but they're curved this way. So you're noticing now that I have some curves that are opening downward and some curves that are opening upward and it's behaving like I expect a hyperbolic paraboloid to behave. So if I continue this process, eventually I arrive at the following. So now we have one quarter of this done. 
and we would like to mirror it or rotationally replicate it, but it turns out that we can't quite do that in this configuration because we're going to mirror on Z or X or whatever. And if we look at this in the plan view, we see that uh, we can't mirror anything about just one of those axes. But what we can do is we can select all of it and we can rotate it uh, 90 degrees about Y. Whoops, I mean 45 degrees. And now we can come to a top view and we can lasso all of that and delete it. And then we can lasso all of this and delete it. And now if we wanted to, we could actually get rid of the directrices before we go replicate. But I think I'm going to leave them there for the following reason. I think it would be instructive to lasso them and then we can suppress them if we want to visually. So we're going to lasso them and we're going to give them a label. We're going to go to frame member labels Director says, OK. And then we're also going to give them some sections, which for the moment we're going to make fairly small. So we'll take HSS round, and this will help us to visualize things. And now I'm going to pick all the others for the moment, and um, I'm going to say analyze that picks all the sections I haven't chosen yet and I'm going to come and pick something larger for visualization purposes and now when I do this I can see what that looks like and I can take all that now and I can look at it in a plan view and I can take all of the following I can't pick the ones along this line, but I can pick everything else and I can say mirror about Z. And I'm going to duplicate the selection and I end up with that. And oh, that's kind of interesting. So I'm going to try to select all of this. Uh, this is a new feature. Sorry, I'm mumbling to myself. So it's allowing me to do that. And now I need to look at this in three dimensions to make sure I'm not fooling myself. And I'm going to take all of that and I'm going to mirror it about X. And now I have a hyperbolic paraboloid. Now it looks a little different from what you're used to. And by the way, just to get the point across, I'm going to eliminate these directrices, or I'm going to select them. All those sections, and I'm going to mask them out. And I want to fully mask them. So I'm going to make them invisible. So now you see all the curved surfaces of a hyperbolic paraboloid. It's a fairly shallow one. It's not as dramatic as we looked at before. So I'm going to come along and I'm going to scale this. And I'm going to just double the vertical dimension. And it looks more like this now. 
And of course, if I really want to make this behave properly, I'm going to put, I'm going to also lower it 16 feet to put the coordinates, the global coordinates at the center of the geometry. So I'm going to move this minus 16 feet. And now it stays centered, whether I rotate it in that direction or I rotate it this way. So these two parabolas then, let me get this in the proper orientation. That parabola And this one are the two parabolas that we started with with our other method. Now, this particular method is very convenient because you will occasionally create geometries in architecture that involved skewed edges. And those geometries may not be well behaved like this one, for example, I started with a square that was flat in the y equals zero plane and I lifted up two joints symmetrically. But you might actually encounter a situation where you have two skewed lines um, which are not symmetric in that same way. And so you can always start with the two skewed edges to create a hyperbolic paraboloid that knits them together. So we could have started with, say, just this edge and the edge on the other side, or just this edge and that edge, and we could have created this hyperbolic paraboloid in this very simple geometric way of just snapping members, subdividing members, and snapping more members. So that concludes our video on our third method for generating hyperbolic paraboloids which is using geometric directrices to establish the location of the surface and then snapping the structural members into that surface geometry.